Morrison Wade was born on November 29, 1816, in Lyme, Connecticut. Morrison Waite grew up in an Escapillian household. His father, Henry Matson Waite, and mother, Maria Selden, were well off. This was due to the fact that Morrison's father, Henry, was a lawyer and also a farmer. Morrison Waite was a graduate from Yale University and studied law. He then went to Toledo, Ohio to practice his study of law. Morrison Waite was mostly a lawyer than a politician. In the Ohio legislature from 1849 to 1850, he was a Whig. He soon became a Republican, but played no role in the Civil War or Reconstruction era. He gained a lot of attention when settling a dispute between the United States and Britain about the British ports. Waite won America $15.5 million. This soon brought a lot of attention to his name. Ulysses S. Grant, President of the United States, appointed Morrison Waite as his Chief of Justice. But Morrison Waite wasn't his first choice. Waite was actually his fifth choice. The others denied his request to become Chief of Justice. Morrison Waite's most famous court case would have to be Munn v. Illinois, which was held in 1877. This court case upheld the state's legislature right to create ganger laws, or for this situation, grain storage rates. Morrison had to disavow the Munn Doctrine due to the railroad regulations, permitting a reading from the 14th Amendment to, lim to limit government power to regulate business. Morrison Waite was married in 1840 to Amelia Chapman Warner. Morrison had five kids, but only four survived childhood. Wade died in Washington on March 23, 1888. Sally Reed and Cecil Reed were a divorced couple who shared custody over a adopted son. Sally and Cecil had joint custody over Skip Reed when he reached his teen years despite Sally's complaints about Cecil being an abusive husband and father. After Skip's apparent suicide in his father's basement, both Cecil and Sally fought to be their son's administrator of a state. At the time, Idaho law required that males must be preferred to females, which ultimately gave Cecil the rights to be his son's administrator of a state. After going through 16 other lawyers, Alan Durr agreed to help Sally in her case against the sexist law. Sally fought through every level of the courts and ultimately asked the United States Supreme Court to declare a law that discriminates against sex to be unconstitutional. Sally Reed was fighting for equal rights for women and had stated that the current Idaho law was both biased and unconstitutional, saying that the law was in violation of the 14th Amendment. At the time, the Chief Justice in the Supreme Court was Warren E. Berger. The case had began and was argued on October 19, 1971, and the court's decision was not announced until November 22, 1971. The court unanimously ruled in favor of Sally Reed because of the unconstitutional law that was in place in Idaho. The court stated, quote, to give a mandatory preference to members of either sex over members of the other, merely to accomplish the elimination of hearings on the merits, is to make the very kind of arbitrary legislative choice forbidden by the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. The choice in this context may not lawfully be mandated solely on the basis of sex." End quote. 